Okay, I got this microphone working again, so I'm no longer using the mic from the webcam, which should be a lot better. Um, I've also, I mean, I'm holding it right now, but I'm bringing it closer. Um, I used to have it at a more appropriate distance for just general purpose use, but I think for these kinds of things, it would really be better uh, given the quality of this microphone and the, the setup otherwise to use it properly for this kind of thing. Um, I want to discuss two things, basically, uh, and they are very tightly related to each other. So we'll discuss this one first. I uh, have to remember to edit it in, but um, if you follow on Twitter, you've definitely seen it. I know at least one member of the ADA community actually retweeted it. Uh, Stefan Kares, I believe, is his name. Um, I made a proposal to Edicor for collaboration, which should surprise the living hell out of a few people who are aware that there is some bad history between us. Um, coming to that decision was not an easy one. But, well, you know what? Let me pull it up and I'll read what I sent them, uh, since that's probably the best way to go about doing this. There's no point in discussing it when I could just read the thing. Um, especially since I put a lot more into that than I, I usually do for these. Since these are largely improv. Um, this is not something I have come to easily. However, it's something I believe uh, to overall be in the best interest for the community and each other. Let's cover hard facts and intended outcomes first, and then my intentions after. At the time this extension was formally announced and uploaded to the marketplace, here I'm talking about their extension. Um, it was Maxim Resnik who uploaded the thing. I believe he's also done the majority of work on it and is probably like the project manager, but I'm not sure how IACOR structures that, so I don't know. Um, there were already four IDA extensions in existence, at least that I'm aware of. And I'd commented on this in another video uh, where I was admittedly salty about it, and am still, but my points will still make sense. Two of these were already on the marketplace, the oldest seeming to belong to Alessandro del Sol, as well as my own. The other two that I'm aware of haven't been uploaded to the marketplace, but belong to Yuta Tomino and Luke Guest. Despite Ida being quite heavily used in certain industries, Ida's false community is small, extremely small. This kind of fragmentation isn't doing any good and does more to hurt each other than to drive anything forward. So now, use and growth for the marketplace extensions. Del Sol's, at the time of this writing, was coming in at 3,524 installs. Note that they had changed their metrics slightly, so the way it was working in the past isn't how it works now. Um, It's, we're going on the new metrics. They have good reasons for changing that. Um, and this winds up averaging in at 2.53 installs per day, going from the date it was first published. Uh, mine, not including the metrics for the smaller snippet extension, so just the main IDA syntax extension, is 7,383 installs, coming in at an average of 10.24 installs per day. And yours, this being Idacores, with 312 installs, averaging three installs per day. Then I go on to say, I've overwhelmingly focused on the syntax cl classifier, 
as it's closest to the expertise I've spent a decade and a half developing. I haven't had any desire nor time required to implement an LSP, that is Language Server Protocol. While the initial implementation was created while also learning how VS Code does classification, it came out decently well and was able to classify more precisely than even GPS, just with certain limitations imposed by the engine the classifier uses. This is a major reason why line breaks give it some trouble. That has to do with VS Code behavior and is something that I can somewhat get around, but not entirely. Um, more recently, I've been made aware of ways to work with and work around these limitations to get near close to EBNF definitions and handle line breaks and other limitations much more robustly. I'll get back to this later. Yours, on the other hand, does have LSP support, but far from great classification. What I'm proposing is that the two projects get combined. Your LSP, my syntax classifier. This would have a number of benefits not including the few related to my intentions, which will be covered later. Number one, reduced fragmentation of tooling. As stated, this doesn't do the community any good. It splits resources in an already small community. Number two, reduced fragmentation of community. The subset of EDA programmers who are also VS Code users is even smaller. Fragmenting this community causes even more problems. The bizarre thing is, for even highly utilized languages like C and C++, there's only one language extension in the marketplace. Until you hit the back pages, but I wouldn't recommend that. With a number of related extensions adding features on top of, but not recreating the extension. Three your team can focus more on LSP development. And I, I, you shouldn't need to explain this, right? It reduces fragmentation of resources within your own team. And four, my knowledge of regex and VS Code behavior and quirks. I've given your team a few sophisticated regex examples to replace some very basic ones your team has provided. Regex is tricky and VS Code's flavor is nowhere near a common one with a lot of unexpected behaviors if you're coming at it to expecting it to behave like PCRE or JSRE. So now my intentions, since this is admittedly quite an unusual situation, especially as I'm the author of the more popular and still faster growing extension, yet coming to you. I'm copy pasting this since it's written out elsewhere and the explanation given there is close enough to appropriate for here that you'll figure it out. So now, this will be the copy pasta. As mentioned when I was elaborating my concerns, I have sensory integration processing issues which are highly comorbid with autism spectrum disorders. To be specific and formal, I have both sensory modulation disorder and synesthesia. Because these aren't widely known, I'll provide a basic explanation of them. SMDs are a highly specific spectrum of sensory disorders where sensory stimuli are overprocessed, underprocessed, or insatiably craved. A very widely known form of this with ASD is the comfort that weight on the body can provide. Overprocessing can manifest as extreme reactions to a stimulus. Underprocessing can manifest as lack of reactions to stimulus. I both overprocess and underprocess. I do not have any SMD issues specifically related to computers, although some are generic enough that they can still present. Certain tactile stimulation are extremely overprocessed to the point of making certain to the point of certain fabrics making me nauseous and causing a spike in blood pressure. There is no consistency or pattern in how this happens. I generally just have to encounter it and avoid it from then on. Synesthesia, on the other hand, is where a sensory stimulus crosses cognitive pathways. This typically is another sensory pathway, although there are observed cases of it crossing, crossing into other non-sensory cognitive pathways, as happens to me sometimes. 
This is very hard to explain for people who have never experienced it, but basically certain sensory stimuli cause additional sensations or responses that are not appropriate. The most common type, which I do not have but is simple to explain, is chromographing synesthesia, whereby graphemes, letters in English, are associated with colors and will be colorized regardless of their printed or displayed color. The recent problems I have been stick uh, the recent problems that have been sticking around is related to a very specific stimulus, my mouse moving over the mouse pad. I'm not sure what the specific thinking is, what the specific thing is, whether it's about the sound or texture or whatever. I haven't been able to figure it out. Other mouse pads still trigger it, although I don't have another mouse to test with. Some days are better than others, while some not affecting me at all. But it's been bad enough that I can't reasonably maintain use of a mouse for more than a few basic operations uh, every hour most days. On one of the particularly bad days, the required mouse use I had to engage in for something unrelated, but it's the effect that's important. The combination of synesthesia and overprocessing was enough that I had to go mute for the remainder of the day and completely isolate myself. At the time, I hadn't seen my girlfriend in two weeks, and that was the day we'd planned to do something. That's it for the copy pasta. so now the last little bit for the proposal. Due to accessibility concerns and difficulties with VS Code, I've recently been rendered largely unable to use it. By contrast, use of other tooling hasn't been anywhere near affected, and I've had no problem continuously developing other things. Despite being made aware of ways to considerably enhance the classifier to work around limitations of VS Code, I've only been able to partially do the rework. Just shy of a month ago, the problems mentioned in the copypasta had grown bad enough to render continued development of anything in VS Code too problematic. So I have uh, contacted the VS Code uh, team about this, uh, trying to ideally get some... It's literally just some minor shit that I need. Um, Unfortunately, given the way the actual development of VS Code works, you pretty much have to use VS Code, so you can't use another thing to implement it. Otherwise, I'd just go in and implement the few key bindings I need so that the specific use of a mouse in certain cases isn't necessary. Um, although, like, it's so it's stupid. Certain things... The, the use of a mouse isn't required in the most pedantic sense, but you have to use like 51 key presses, I counted for one thing, to get around it using the keyboard, which is just absolutely insane. Um, it's literally just a case of a few key presses and if I could a few key bindings for uh, certain things, and I, I could do it continue to do it fine um but realistically a lot of the other things that i had said there still apply um the primary motivation behind this has to do with the uh fragmentation in the community and i i, I really do believe that even though we don't necessarily get along all that well that um this would be better for everybody because you've got a single consolidated product that is able to provide the thing that I do well and allow them to focus on the other thing. And just, it, it's better. It's a very small community. That, that kind of fragmentation is not helpful for anybody. Um, so the other thing that I had to talk about, we basically already did. Uh, a lot of the sensory issues that wind up um, that I have have gotten considerably worse than uh, usual. Uh, I'm not really sure what the issue there is. Uh, certain sounds have become problematic when they haven't in the past. 
um, specifically the sound of my dog's nails against only certain floors in the house, um, which has been really frustrating because uh, I, I, I do love that dog. A little annoying sometimes because he's dumbest buck, he's the dumbest dog I've ever seen. <laughs> but I do love him. Um, but the the clacking, uh, this is one of those weird things that you see with synesthesia and what I mentioned by the sometimes crosses into other pathways. Um, The clacking. The only thing that should register for the clacking of a nail against a floor is obviously the sound. You should process that sound. Every time I hear it, it feels like I'm peeing. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm not. It's not like it causes me to wet myself. It's not. It doesn't cause me to actually start peeing, but it feels like it. And that's extremely disorienting. Um, the other thing that's been happening a lot, and I, I think it's just because of my skin being increasingly dry, because uh, it is winter, and the, the winters here are kind of brutal and dry. Um, textures that normally don't bother me have been starting to bother me. Uh, like I'd mentioned with the moving of the mouse uh, across the mouse pad, I don't know exactly what the deal is there. If it's the mouse against the pad or like my palm against the pad, just you know, people hold mice in different ways, but I tend to have the the palm hover uh, ever so slightly, uh, but it typically drags a little bit. Um, I don't know if it's that or if it's not the tactility of it, but the sound of the mouse across the pad or what. I don't know what the deal is there. Uh, that's literally never bothered me in the past. Um, another example is cotton always bothers me to some extent. I, I try to buy uh, clothing that is overwhelmingly like polyester or nylon. Like this is a uh, nylon spandex blend. Uh, one of the nice things about knowing how to sew, if y'all weren't familiar, I got a sewing machine. Um, as I can make this kind of, god damn it, I can make this kind of shit myself and you know, not have to look so hard to kind of find these things. Um, cotton is interesting. Because uh, how the fuck do you put this? When I feel it, I can also hear it. And I don't know how to describe what I hear, but it's not supposed to be there uh if my hands are well moisturized enough like pretty much throughout the entirety of summer it doesn't wind up bothering me at all um but that's particularly annoying uh this past month has been the only time where literally the feeling of my own hand will bother me and it's weird. If I touch other parts of my body, it's largely fine. But if I touch the palms of my hands together, or touch, like wrap my hand around and touch my own palms, um, or if I touch the soles of my feet, uh, it, it severely bothers me. Um, so that's been interesting. That's been interesting. On the upside, I got into a welding class that nothing about welding equipment bothers me. So, weird how that shit works. 
but that's that should be good. That should be good. And we'll end there on a good note. Have a good one, guys.